So in this video, I'm going to show you another way that you can do a screencast or record what's on your desktop. But this time I'm going to show you a tool that also does annotations on your screen. So if you want to point stuff out as you go or highlight stuff as you go, you've got that option. So first of all, we need to get the software to do that. And that's in the App Store. Now, at the moment, it's probably easiest if you have your own personal account to use that and install the software. If you don't have a personal account, you can come and see me and I'll hook you up with a HIS uh, Apple account. Uh, alternatively, what's actually also possible is I can just drop the application into your applications folder. So we've got a couple of options to get it, but if you're looking to do it on your own, use your App Store account. So you're looking for a Pivo annotator, which is this one here. And so I'm going to go ahead and get that. And when it's ready, you can just go ahead and open it. I'll get that out of the way. All right, so that puts this new toolbar on your screen. You can minimize it and, and pop it out of the way. Uh, the other way you can get it is up here. So you can you know, hide it and then bring it back again, depending on what you're doing. All right, so your tools include so you've got some drawing tools, so you can draw on your screen, you can switch pens. All right. uh, so this is generally set up more for when you're projecting to a screen and you're demonstrating stuff to students as part of your direct teaching. Uh, as part of the tools here, you get this little white arrow here. So if you click on that, that's where you can change colors, you can change the thickness, you've got your different effects. You can do that, you can have two pens that way. If you need to, you can switch between the two pens really quickly. You've got your drawing tools, right? all the fairly standard drawing tools with one of your text box. Comes other little tools like a compass. Oh, that's kind of cool. You, you'll find a lot of these um, tools are typically math centric, unfortunately. Um, cloning tool, oh sorry, it's not a cloning tool. A, um, let's, put a, let's put a stamp on it. Uh, again, this would be more for if you're working in a direct instruction situation, you can rub your stuff out. Uh, you get, and you've got your different eraser sizes there. Uh, you can point to stuff. Your, uh, your other toolkit, so you've got a ruler, protractor, a, a highlight tool, all right? So you can draw people's attention to stuff. And then you've got your undo, your redo, and your trash, which will clear everything that's on the screen. Turn that off. All right, that's your drug. You can also go to just a pure whiteboard mode. And again, so you get your, your pen tools, your drawing tools. So if you need to add text, that's under here. All right. Um, and then if you're doing direct instruction, you can have two pointing devices. You can have two kids working at the same time. What's really cool about, go back to this one, what's really cool about this particular app is down here. So you can take screenshots, but the screen recording is what we're going to look at today. You can also live stream what you're doing to YouTube, but we won't get into that today. I might do that another time if there's a need for it. So you can record your whole screen or you can record a portion of the screen. So I'm going to go for the whole screen. It just starts recording, doesn't give you a countdown and away it goes. So you've got your little timer up here. So you've got a bit of an idea of when it started recording. Uh, so you let it record, do what you need, do your talking and all the rest of it. And when you're done, you just hit the stop button down here, I guess. There we go. And that's not recording. It'll ask you for a name. So we'll call it test the desktop that's where everybody keeps everything and save that and that's popped up there now what you do need to be aware of is that before you upload it it can get quite big uh, particularly if you're doing a longer video you may also find that the .mov extension might not always work depending on how you plan on using it all right, so that's the introduction to the IPVO annotator.